we're going to always have the curse of the co- coffee monster. That's cool, though, because our um, our intro music, even though it's just canned intro music, is never really the same. No, it's good. Yeah, it just it's kinda, loud today, yeah, too. It's a re- yeah, I think you must have got your ears cleaned out or something. I guess we're so. messing with your headphone volume, so. which is good. Welcome. Welcome to the 2x2 two two Podcast. I'm Danny. I'm Harold. We're from Burlington Baptist Church, and we are brought to you by a bunch of fine sponsors. Yes. Uh, the first of those being CrossFit Northern Kentucky. We love you guys. Uh, they just took a big trip to Montana, oh, yeah. the, 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 the team, um, and did a Spartan race, uh, something, that, um, oh, yeah. something that I do a lot of, but they didn't really invite me. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I had some weddings to do that weekend. That's why I blame it on I feel like someone in that group knew. Yeah, no. That I had some weddings, but A, the worst part is, is A, I love Montana. Yeah. And B, I love Spartan races. Yeah. Well, so. you know, you're, 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 you got some bills right now. I do. Yeah. It was a bit, yeah. <laughs> no, I do. Uh, that's absolutely the case. We're with Tina's building getting open and all the things that are going on there. And so brought to you by Kentucky Olive, purveyors of fine oils and balsamics. Good stuff. That, yeah. Really good stuff. We have, uh, Anytime Tina makes chicken now, she like cooks for the week sometimes. Yeah. And she's using the Kentucky olive, which which means yeah. that she's going to be at the store buying bulk and, size. And Tom is going to give us some cooking lessons. He, he said he was. He said he was. He said yeah. we needed them. So. We'll have to get him a wheelie car to wheel around the. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. He's doing he's, good. I saw yeah. him coming up the steps he's, on Sunday. He's, he's doing really, really well. And then we have some friends at. Answers in Genesis. Yep. We love them. We do. Uh, and we have, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to use it. Now we have a new friend at Steak and Shake. We do. Yeah. Yes. Brother Michael. Brother Michael. Danny calls him Brother Michael <laughs> Stick and Cheek. Listen, that's, <laughs> I do. If he's listening to this, I do do that because that has how I associate who he is. Yeah. Wonderful dude. Yeah. Really, I'm really good dude. I'm not sure if he listens to the podcast, but. Oh, uh, he probably doesn't. I he's like smarter him. than yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, so, I'm just kidding. For everybody listening to the podcast, I didn't mean that. He's you know, If you're listening, you're obviously smart. So I'm going to tell the story before I pray. Okay. Uh, Jenny was gone to Walmart last week. She was going to buy some flowers to take to school for the kids for Mother's Day. And she, apparently she's looking around and she ran into a lady and they got to talking. And uh, I don't know, they got to talking and she asked her, you know, is she from here? I don't know. She told her we moved up here and we was at Burlington Baptist. And she said, oh, I love Two by Two Podcast. <laughs> and uh, her name was, I think, Kathleen. But she she knew Danny, I think. But uh, yeah. She probably knew like, Dad, too. She I would say she knew dad. And Jenny was like, you know, somebody, I met somebody that listens to two by two. <laughs> the one person besides Tom and my dad that listens to, no, <laughs> she listens told, to the podcast. Uh, this lady has been fighting cancer, but she said that uh, the podcast really helped her get through last year. And good. So that, was good. A, that was a blessing. Just, it is a blessing. You know, and I was thinking about this this morning. A lot of times, man, we do this. It makes me feel better because I think sometimes... It's good for me. Yeah. It's good for me to get into the word some and, and, you know, and really kind of reflect on what you talked about. Uh, and it keeps me from I'm not really going through the motions, but, you know, going, OK, well, this is the music and this is the sermon and this is this. And after that, yeah. it's over with and we're on to the next week. It gives me the opportunity to reflect on some stuff. And it's pretty good. Yeah. Really, really good so stuff. I was listening to a, a Carrie Newhoff uh, podcast this morning. They were just talking about, you know, some churches have just, you know, they've gone back to just streaming their services on Sunday and not uh not using digital media during the week. Yep. And uh, so this is kind of a way for us to pop in on Tuesday nights and yeah. and talk a little bit about the word. And yeah. so I, I, I and, and we enjoy it. You know, that, that's the one thing is, you know, I kind of, I had mentioned this to you before the, the pandemic stuff had started. And, um, uh, and then when it happened, I was like, Oh, this is the opportunity yeah. to make it. Happen. I was like, I know I can listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Which may still be true. It may be true. Actually, but, yeah. Well, let me pray. All right. Lord, thank you for your word. And, uh, thank you for someone like Philip who just, uh, submits to your leading and, uh, you used him to be, a, an instrument of, of the gospel. And, uh, you, you invite us to be part of your plan. And, uh, we pray you'd give us courage and, uh, a willing heart, uh, equip us with the gospel. I pray that for our church, that we would, uh, be a gospel conversational church that we regularly talk about Jesus and what he's done for us. And we pray that this podcast would uh, display and share the gospel. Amen. And uh, thank you for using it in ways we don't even know. And uh, we give you praise for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So before we get into the meat, yep. let's talk about let's talk about uh, the Ethiopian eunuch. So we have the Great Commission. Mm-hmm. Then we have Acts 1-8. Yep. Right. Be my witnesses. Mm-hmm. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, ends of the earth. Yeah. So, but yes. So, ends of the earth. Right. 
So at this point, the Jew-Gentile relationship has been an interesting one. And still even to this day, somewhat an interesting one, right? Yeah. So you have a, a bunch of Jewish converts in the disciples and Philip and these people that they've, they've gathered along the way that are now taking messages to Gentiles. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when we use the term Gentile, we are using it in the, ter- in the, in the, any, in any person, not a Jew. Right. Right. <clears throat> so, so let me pause for just a second. This morning I was listening to a podcast, a, a Johnny Hunt evangelism yes. podcast. Yes. And the pastor who's in, uh, I think first Baptist Norfolk, Virginia or something, but he said he, he wants his church to be an Acts 8, 4 church. Oh. And so I'm looking it up. Well, let's look that up. So those who were scattered went on their way preaching the word. Mm-hmm. And so he was saying, I, I went want to gather on Sundays and then I went to church to scatter. I like it. And I thought, well, that's good. Yeah. I didn't, I, I wish I heard that last week. Cause I'd said, you would have used it. I want you guys to be a Acts 8 for church. Yeah. I want you to come here and hear the word and, and then go scatter and, and share it. So anyway, missed that on Sunday, but I had that in there. Uh, yeah. So, uh, that was a good segue by me. I didn't even know that. You, yeah. 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 Pretty good. I liked your eyes light up. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. You gave I, me the opportunity. When I heard it this morning, I'm like, Oh, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was good. I should have got that. Yeah. So, yeah. So we've got the Ethiopian eunuch, and he's reading Isaiah. We know that. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and so Philip is in Samaria preaching the gospel. Yes. And it, it sounds like it's a fruitful ministry because mm-hmm. it says they're filled with joy in, in that city. And so God says, i got another assignment. Mm-hmm. So and Philip's, so, so I guess what I'm trying to do is lay the, the groundwork for the fact that w- when you look at the, the, men, the ministries in Acts, right, it's generally... Paul, Peter, Philip, these guys, Stephen, speaking to Jews. At the beginning. At the beginning, yeah. right. So now they're branching out. Yeah. So for, so talk to me a little bit about how, how would this have been for Philip and how, to talk to this Gentile, right, as, as it relates to me and you going to somebody's house and talking to somebody who might be lost. Yeah, so uh, we got... We got the early church, and, and so Philip is one of those seven in Acts 6 that the church called out to serve the church, minister to the widows, mm-hmm. and uh, he's filled with the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and of course, so Stephen, when he's stoned, the church is spread out because of the persecution. And uh, and so it seems like there's this shift, and uh, the church that's spread, they're, they're more willing to go, uh, it seems like, and just wherever God leads them. And uh, so that's how the church kind of spreads is the persecution of Stephen, the stoning of Stephen, the church spreads out. And uh, and so I mentioned that the, you know, Philip is called the evangelist in chapter 21. So uh, he seems like he's one that would go wherever God sent him. Right. Uh, you, you know, we obviously know Peter struggled a little bit with the Gentiles because he kind of had that in his DNA that we're Jews and yeah. uh, and Jesus fer- certainly said the, the gospel goes first to the Jews but then also to the Gentiles right. and so we kind of see that transition and then by the time Paul is converted he feels his calling is the apostle to the Gentiles right so we got Peter James we got all the apostles there in Jerusalem in Acts 2 and uh, the church is birthed there and uh, and then Stephen and then the church is spread and so Philip is right there in the beginning, and uh, so he. It seems like uh, the, they knew that the gospel was going to other peoples, and they were seemed like they were a little bit more okay with that. So, it, I'm going to go back to something that you said, and we'll get we'll get back into this. Is it cool sometimes to look back at the at the mastery of the plan of of putting these churches? So so certainly. So Paul who was persecuting Christians for what he believed the Jewish faith, right? Yeah. The Pharisee of the highest, one of the highest Pharisees going. For the Christian faith. He's, well, no, no. He he thought he was doing the work for the Jews. He was yeah. persecuting Christians. Yeah. Yes. For the Jewish, I got you. Yes, yeah. A Greek, studied Greek-speaking Jewish person, and then God takes him and makes him the, the minister of ministers to the, the Gentiles, which is awesome, right? And yep. then you've got, it's just really cool. To look. 
it's just really cool to look back at this and go, this plan seems scattered. When you read yeah. Acts, it's like, man, there's people running all over the place and people are getting stoned and there's people running and hiding and, and yeah. all this other stuff. But so there, there's a plan in it. At the beginning, you mentioned Acts 1-8, right. which is kind of the plan. <laughs> right. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, yep. Judea, Samaria, and the earth. And so we see that played out. He never did. Acts. He never did tell them. By the way, the way you're going to get there is going to be an interesting one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're going to get, you know, you're persecuted and scattered. And, one and, guy's going to get stoned, and then yeah. you're going to take another step. and so Somebody's going to get beat up and drag themselves back into the city. You yeah. know, it, it doesn't really tell you that part. But. And, the, you know, Paul's <laughs> going to, he's going to get beat and shipwrecked, and, yeah. but he's going to go to Rome. And, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, it is interesting. And uh, and so from Sunday, the, the first point was just, that salvation is a work of God. And here we find God doing a work in this Ethiopian eunuch yeah. uh, who had come to Jerusalem to worship. And, uh, y- you know, I don't even know uh, how all that works. Uh, he, he's God has showed him a light and he's trying to respond to that light. And, and I believe that's the key uh, is that God's doing a work in people's lives right. and he sends us sometimes if we're willing to go. And gives them the, the the whole light, and he certainly used Philip for that. So I guess so. And 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 I'll just go ahead and 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 hit this point. This this Ethiopian eunuch is not the same color as Philip. Sure, obviously, he's not the same uh, culture. Right. He grew up in a completely different, basically, area. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the term eunuch. It would mean that he has some sort of a job that they made him that way. Mm-hmm. So the 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 imagery that I, I kind of just constantly think of when I think of this story is that they could not have been any less alike, right? Sure. Yeah. You know. That would be good. Yeah. Yep. So, and he's in a high position. Right. Uh, apparently, minister of finance or mm-hmm. something like that. And so uh, he's reading Isaiah. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> Do you think Philip went, hey, could you have picked an easier book for me to explain? Because I would have really liked to maybe go for an easier book. Well, he might have said, oh, Isaiah 53. I I, I got that one. Uh, got some experience with that one. But, of course, yeah. Isaiah 53 is the suffering servant. Mm-hmm. And Jesus would come and be bruised for our iniquities and, and take our punishment. And so he just so happened to be reading in Isaiah. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. Mm-hmm. As a lamb is silent before it shears, he does not open. I mean, that's that's, that's what Jesus did. Well, the interesting and one of the interesting points is is the Ethiopian eunuch asked specifically, "Who's he talking about? Is he mm-hmm. talking about himself, or is he talking about somebody else?" Yeah. yeah, and and of course, Philip proceeded to explain the good news and preach Jesus, and uh, and that's what we want to do. And and listen, sometimes we don't we we might not have all the answers. Oh, we don't. But, I don't. But we can preach Jesus, right? And we can say, "Listen, I, we can study that and we can go back and look at that." But here's the main thing to know that Jesus. He was the lamb yep. who died for your sins and uh, took your punishment. And and so if you get caught up in, in a question you don't know, I mean, point him to Jesus and say, here's what I do know. You made, you made a solid point on Sunday where you said, hey, you're probably not going to, you know, as we go out as gospel ministers and, and, and try to, to take the gospel to every home. It, it's probably going to be rare where you knock on somebody's door and they come with the Bible. And go, hey, I was just yeah. reading something. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you catch the the part there about? Uh, 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 how could do you, Philip said? Do you understand what you're reading? Yeah. And he said, How can I unless someone? I mean, that's Isaiah. Yeah. Yeah. How can I unless someone explains it to me? So Phil, Danny just talking about his class. Yeah. To study Isaiah, and uh, it is pretty hard to understand. It, and it, it, it is. I mean, you got to break it down. Well, the, well, it's just it's not that. It's yeah. the time that it takes to really look into some of the stuff. I mean, because he he yeah, you know, a lot of those you, know, you talk about Ezekiel and even like Jeremiah and yeah. stuff are, are difficult. Ezekiel's really t- challenging. Yes, it is. And yes, and, it is. and and the prophets, you know, they it's not chronological. Yep. And so sometimes they'll talk about something and then they'll talk about something else and then they'll back to talking about that again. And you're like, well, I thought he's already. Which is so funny because I'm not sure how many of my class, a lot of the cla- my Sunday school class is the praise team, right? So the funny part is, is one of the praise team members said, when we move out of what we're studying now, which is going to be two or three weeks, we want to do Isaiah. 
And I kind of suggested Acts. I was like, let's maybe let's do Acts then Isaiah. And, then, and, and you're preaching out of Acts on Sunday, and the book they're reading is Isaiah, which is kind of ironic. But I was just kind of like, yeah. well, that's interesting that, it you is. Know, that that's how it happened. But so I, I guess the, the interesting thing that I thought you you found interesting, and we had talked about this, and this kind of goes along with what what you're preaching, what you preached on Sunday is you, you had a you, you're getting. I don't remember how you put it, but you said, I'm getting kind of uh, tired of the excuse, well, that's not really in my wheelhouse. That's not really in my cup of tea, cup of tea, right? And you said, well, I'm the pastor. How would that be if I said, you know, reaching people for Christ, that's just not really my cup of tea. I'm more of an administrator. <laughs> well, they wouldn't accept that. Get out of here. You're right. And, and, you know, you talked about, and I thought it was a great analogy, and I don't know if, if you thought of it, if you did, it was wonderful, where you said, if you drive, you drive to church this morning, and you see a house on fire. Yeah. Are you going to just pass that house by? Are you going to go up there and go, hey, get out of this fire? But well, it's the same. You're, yeah. If you're not going to heaven, you're yeah. you're going to get you're going to go to an eternal lake of fire. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's kind of where, uh, the, where our theology meets our practice. Right. Because I mean, anybody's going to say, well, yeah, if the house is on fire, I'm going to go sure. knock on their door, right. and even if it's not my cup of tea. <laughs> But if we believe people are going to hell, I, I'm I'm sure I heard that. I, we, no, um, I mean it's great but, though. I mean it's it's it's. But if we really believe that people are going to hell, and uh, Jesus came to rescue them, uh, we get out of our comfort zone a little bit. And you know that's the. I mean, I struggle with getting out of my comfort zone. The church in general, you know, we all struggle with getting out of our comfort zone. And, I'm probably uh, one of the few that doesn't worry about it as much as others, and I have to remember that. Yeah. Like when I'm, you know, when when I'm ministering to people. Um, and it's really kind of one of those things is, is I, you, you have so many people that I call under your care yeah. right? when you, when you work at church or when you're involved in church. So I've got people who've been Christians for 40 years that, yeah. are, that are extremely mature. And then I've got people who have been Christians for a couple of years yeah. and, and aren't. Yeah. So you, you always have to think that, you know, those, most of those people are not as comfortable as me walking up to a complete stranger going, Hey, I'll let me, I'll, you talk about Jesus. I'll talk about Jesus. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and part so, of it's on us pastors. We've let yeah. people be comfortable not sharing their faith right. and shame on us, yeah. shame on us for not leading and, and, and even pushing, equipping. And, uh, and so, you know, I mentioned Sunday, I'm going to give an account for, for that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I just even mentioned Hebrews thirteen seventeen. It, it would be easier to give an account to the church right. than it is for the church. Right. Because I could tell you, I, you know, I, I'll lead you if you But when you're accountable for the church, mm -hmm. then you got to, you know, say, why why didn't you lead them to go do what I told you? Yeah. And, uh, so we want to be faithful in that. And then just this whole divine appointment. You know, there's been times where I've, I've showed up and God has already at work mm -hmm. and uh you, you just you just get through the gospel because you know that he's already done he's already turned the light on and uh well, yeah. that's awesome when, when that happens and it does sometimes it's kind of interesting so and and not that and none of the no credit is mine yeah. right you know because uh but danielle works over at uh dina's office dina's office and uh she was outlining my teeth because i got to get yeah. um, braces kind of um, adult braces and I was like, you guys go to church? I'm just asking. Yeah. I was like, you're surrounded by tons of people. And they were like, and she, she, she was like, well, I know Dina's always telling me and Katie's always telling me and all this other stuff. I was like, we well, ought to come. And, and of course I knew Brian, I didn't realize who it was at the time. He'd come in the barbershop and, yeah. and I had known him super guy. So, you know, you just never know. Cause it, yeah. he's already working. You know, just you just got to be brave enough to go. Yeah. Do y'all go to church or, you yeah, know, whatever. Sure. Not, you know, like I said, it, and, and not, none of that credit is mine. The credit is on on them over there because they're like y'all ought to come to church with us. Yeah, you know? I wonder how many times we we are prompted by the Spirit and God's at work in someone's life and we we pass it up and you know He'll send somebody else, but man, we we miss out sometimes. So something that I found is I'm I'm and and I'm not this I'm not saying again I'm not saying this to brag at all, but I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum now. Yeah. Where where if I feel like somebody asks. I'm I'm jumping. Yeah. Right. But yeah. now I have to go. All right. Let's think this through. Yeah. How are you going to do this without overwhelming this person or anything? So I have to watch that now. Yeah. I have to really kind of die. Sure. I know this is weird for everybody listening, but sometimes I have to dial it back. Yeah. Well, I tell people <laughs> when we take these gospel things out, we're not right. going to have a conversation 
you know, on every house, some people right. are going to invite them to Bible school right. and say, can I leave you some gospel information? Mm-hmm. And they're going to take it and shut the door. And that, that's going to happen a lot. Yep. But there'll be some who say, you know, uh, I've been, you know, I, I need to get in church. Mm-hmm. I got some questions and, yeah. and we want to be prepared. But, uh, and, and people don't, you know, they, they're not mean. I mean, you, you might run into someone every now and then, but most of the time people appreciate that. And, well, and not going to be pushy. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, there's, there's, you know, and, and I'd like to tell everybody, I would love to tell everybody that you're, you know, you're probably not going to run into a devout atheist that's going to question her. Well, you might. Yeah, you might. Yeah, yeah, you might. I mean, you know, I've, I've talked to people, um, who, who basically will immediately challenge. Yeah. And I'm, of course I invite that. I'd yeah. love to have a conversation with you. I would love to see where your faith lies and my faith lies, and maybe we can come to some kind of yeah. you know, understanding. But and, and we'll tell people, you know, if you get somebody that's got deep questions, I mean, write their name down. We'll, we'll yeah. send Danny. Yeah. yeah, I'll go. Yeah, I, I, well, or, or I think Brandon's probably even better, but he, uh, you know, he's really good with that stuff too. But he, he, it's just one of those things that um, there's nothing to be scared of. No, but no. but that but that fear will work on you. Yeah, it'll work on you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. There's there's nothing worse, in my opinion. I don't know this, but I can't imagine there's anything worse for the devil than to have somebody that just wasn't on. And I, 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 everybody's on God's radar, but but not on the church's radar. Kind of start becoming on the church's radar because the devil's like, oh, I can't have this. Yeah, you know? yeah. So the eunuch is is reading the word, and uh, Philip is able to answer his questions, and uh, he told him the good news about Jesus, beginning with the scriptures, and uh, and then the the eunuch wants to respond in faith and uh, is baptized, and uh, and Philip's on to the next mission field. So respond in faith. Let's stop there. So you want to talk about verse 37 now? Yeah. So okay. uh, verse 36, you know, there's some water. The eunuch says, what keeps me from being baptized? And we, we'd say, so Philip explained the gospel and uh, talked to him probably about repentance and faith. And, and Philip knew what it took to be saved. And so, uh, you know, Luke didn't record every little, uh, Philip said this, the eunuch said this. Uh, and so there is a response, uh, but in King James and in lots of other versions, there's a verse 37 that's not in the ESV, it's not in the CSB, uh, and it reads, some, you, you got it? Yeah, I got it right here. Yeah. So um, it says, and Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Okay, so in in some translations, there is an, an actual uh response of faith do, do you believe yes i believe and then go get baptized which we would agree with yes is necessary yes uh and yet some people say well why why is that taken out and so th- that gets into translations and studies of manuscripts and so what happens is uh esv csb they, they study uh manuscripts uh ideally you you want the oldest uh, you want the, the manuscripts that has others that are the same. And so there's some older manuscripts that don't have verse 37. Uh, Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he replied, I believe. So we, we think, where's that all about? Well, probably a scribe was doing all this and, and he got to, uh, let's go get baptized. And the scribe thought, well, wait a minute, I need to clarify why he's getting baptized. Right. And so he probably put, well, Philip said, do you believe with all your heart that Jesus is the Christ? And Philip said, yes. And so because <laughs> there's older manuscripts without that, uh, when they translated it, they, they just made a footnote and said there's, you know, some manuscripts include this, but there are some who don't. So the scribes would sometimes add some clarification. Yes. And we would agree with that verse. Yes, he had to believe that no. Jesus was the Christ before he was baptized. Uh, so it's not that these translations take that out uh, because they didn't like it, or it's because there's manuscripts without that in there, and so, that bothers some people. It does, and, it, and then you get into the, you know, of course, this is where the, the the King James version is the only version. Well, then these are also translated from, and, and there's more time spent on this and this that, and the other. Do, do you know what I always say about this? Do you know what Bible is the best Bible? The original. Yes. Greek, Hebrew. However. If you're a believer or a new believer or someone asks you this question and you say, the one that's going to make you read it 
Yeah. yeah I mean, that's the truth, right? I mean, yeah. you know, there's, there's so much good stuff in, in all of these. So whether it's King James or ESV, they're, they're all translations. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they use the best manuscripts at the time. Mm-hmm. And we know since the 1611, there's been lots of manuscripts found in addition, some of them older than yeah. the nose. And that's a whole study. That's a whole uh, you dis- could, discipline. Yeah, we could go a long way on this. You know, yeah. we talked about, um, you know, I just had a new, I, well, I'm, and I have finishing up my New Testament, um, the authentic, authenticity and accuracy of the New Testament for yeah. canon, right? That's yeah. one of my classes. And it's been an interesting class for me. I'm one that I really, really liked. But it's one of those things where there's there's a couple of scholars that, that they're not sure that we even have the original of the majority of the Bible. Yeah. Right. Bits and pieces. Right. Yeah. So we have manuscripts and some found as, as, as what was it, 1942? Some did with, Qumran. Yeah. Was, was even the 60s, I think. Oh, was it the 60s? Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember the time, but, but but that's pretty recent. And then yeah. they dated those manuscripts as older yeah. than some of the ones that were trying. So, you, so yeah. you've got a lot going on, but. So there's still people, architects, finding, <laughs> right. finding, and of course they're, they're fragments because yep. they've been, Two thousand years, yeah. but but the the they're, they're the fragments are almost always identical because yeah. the scribes were so particular in copying. Uh, but if if there's something in some of the old ones, if there's something that's not there, and they're in the the latter ones. Right. Somebody probably added it, or they noted it. You know, yeah. they, they generally note those yeah. too, which is kind of interesting. But and so the big thing is, is it's not that. Some translators said, ah, oh, we don't like that, or it mentions blood. It's not that. It's they're trying to use the the most reliable manuscripts. Yes. Uh, but there's certainly nothing wrong with that verse. It it's helpful. It's it, very helpful. That's why the scribe probably put it in there. Right. But anyway, that that's yeah. complicated and, and well, you can study manuscripts and how and and Bible translations and should with an open mind just to see how they come up with what they And and if anyone is interested in that or <laughs> would like to talk about that. I now have some knowledge on those things because of some of the classes recently that I've taken, and it's it's interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's it, it's kind of interesting to me because it's shocking at first. Yeah. But it only strengthens my belief. In yeah. The, in me the, too. You know what I mean? It's not it's not one of those things where you go, well, now I don't know what's what's what. It's just basically strengthened my belief in the fact that this is truly how, is the inspired word of God. How serious they take. The manuscripts, right? Is is uh, yeah. and you yeah. find out, well, and you, and you find out that they found I think seven different what is it so, something like and I don't want to misquote the number, but they found seven different versions of sections of the Book of Isaiah. Yeah, and when they compare them, they're identical. Yeah, yeah. and they found them at different times. They found them in different places. Pretty interesting. I mean, that's it is. That's it pouring. Is. That's putting great care into absolutely. You know, taking care of something. So yeah. So the eunuch uh, responded in faith. He wanted to get baptized. Uh, he came out rejoicing, and uh, and so we just just the rejoicing when we're able to share the gospel and someone saved is nothing to compare to that. And um, we we'd love for our listeners to uh, we'd love to talk to you about your faith, absolutely, and believing in Jesus and absolutely. answer your questions. And uh, and then you know Philip is gone. He's he's gone on to the next place. And I just said you know the gospel. It's not about the it's not about the messengers. It's it's about the gospel of Jesus that changes lives. And we just we just want to be the messengers and. Share that good news. And <laughs> so let me ask you a question. Yep. So let me let me outline something real quick, and then we're going to do a probability. The probability of you walking up on a house, then walking to the door with this Bible and going, hey, I'm glad you're here because I've been looking at this and I need some help. And then by the time, it doesn't say the amount of time that went by. Yeah. But you get done explaining it to them and they go, hey, I got to pull out back. Can I just get baptized right now? Probability of that happening. Hmm. Unless God is in it. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> if God was in it, a lot more likely, yes. but not, not usually. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. And uh, you know, I, and we got so many advantages now that uh, you know, Philip he didn't have. Well, think his, about it. You can walk around with one of these. Yeah, Philip didn't say, yeah. "Well, look, look here, look at look here at Isaiah fifty three, yeah, and, and look here at uh, the end of the, the Gospels, and and Jesus is he's before Pilate, and he doesn't open his. No, he, they don't. They don't have what we we got yep. the spirit. We both got the spirit, but now we have the whole word and the whole story, and uh, so we're we're just blessed. And uh, this is a great story that just if, if you want to be used by God, you just yeah. God send me every morning. Pray God, give me an opportunity. Also in Isaiah, by the way. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> chapter six, verse eight, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, send me, Lord. Yeah. yeah, and so some of the just the quickly the points is pray for opportunities, submit to God's promptings, and. Uh, 
preach it, Jesus and trust God for the results. And if and if you're like me, pray for the opportunity. Pray that when the opportunity comes, you recognize it. Yeah, yeah. Because I had to do that for I've done and I still do it. You yeah. know, Tina and I pray in the morning, and and I always say, you know, pray. She, she has a job where she interfaces with people individually for an extended period of time, and yeah. and, it's a, and and we'll pray, pray that we recognize that opportunity when it, when it comes, cause he'll send them to you. Yeah. He'll send them to you. And if you're like, I used to be two hours later, you go, oh, tag on. Yeah. I would, I should have said something to that dude about Jesus sure. or that person, you know, about Jesus. I do that sometimes. That's it. And that's to me, that's a terrible thing. That was yeah. my, that was a good opportunity. I might not get that back. He gave it you know. to, an opportunity to somebody else. But anyway, if you're listening and uh, if you have questions, we'd love to, to talk to you about them. And if you yeah. have somebody you want us to talk to, we'd, we'd be glad to do that. Sure. We'd, we'd love to talk to people about the Lord. So Absolutely. Um, what? So we've got some stuff coming up. We're, we we went and looked at the outdoor service? section for the, for the service that's coming up on June the 2nd. 6th. 6th. <laughs> June the second, we're going to go visiting. That's right. Gospel Pastor. Okay, I knew June the second was something, but June the sixth. June the sixth, we're having an outdoor second service. We'll be out outside, so we're hoping we're praying for good weather. Ten forty five. Ten forty five. Uh, we'll have the we'll have the stage, Gary's wagon, and uh, we're going to be outside. We'll have a little tent, and then there's going to be lunch afterwards. Could be a nice nice day. So invite somebody if you if if uh, it'll be kind of neat. You don't have to. Um, We'll have to meet in the building. We're going to meet outside. There's going to be food trucks for afterwards, and then uh, our band's going to play a little bit yep. afterward. Be a good day. Yeah. So and, invite somebody. And if you want to be like Philip, and uh, you want to go, and maybe the Lord will give you some gospel opportunities, uh, come to our website. we got June the 2nd, which is a Wednesday night, June the 5th, a Sunday, uh, Saturday. We're going to be going out with gospel materials and uh, asking the Lord to give us some gospel opportunities and i'm excited about that so i'm gonna tell you something yeah this is totally off the subject but this has to do with with getting people here in church inviting people you know if 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 you if you think that they're asking you something get them get them in here we'll talk to them i promise yeah yeah but it's getting harder because of there's there's some new faces in the congregation right yeah so our team you'll see us up there talking sometimes and we're trying to identify like maybe visitors (laughs) Yeah, it's getting so hard because yeah. we don't recognize everybody, which is awesome. But but we will try to find a visitor if you invite them, and, and if not, come grab us. Yeah. You know, so the Lord added Connie mm-hmm. to our family this week, yep. and uh, it was sweet. Connie's an older lady, and uh, she did said, "I want to be a part of what God's doing," and uh, that's awesome. awesome. It yeah. is awesome. Yeah, for her to want to want to do that. What's like, her last name? Tisa. Nice. <laughs> Like Lisa, but with a T. Now I had to stop and think. Yeah, that's okay. Tisa. Well, I mean, that's the only way I can remember Brother Mike, Brother Michael Steak and Shake. Yeah. Because I got to associate it with something that. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. But the, no, we, I mean, we are really, this is a really, really blessed time. And it's goofy to, you know, everybody, it's kind of cliche when people say that because you'll hear people say, have a blessed day, kind of smart aleck. But uh, it's a very blessed time in our church because. The, the more we f- try to figure out ways to to spread the gospel, God's just sending more people, yeah. which is really cool. Praise the Lord. Yeah, and it's nothing that we've done, I don't think, that, you yeah. know, just try to be obedient. You know, and I think maybe uh, God's using COVID to, to help. I mean, a lot of people are a little more receptive nowadays. And yeah. uh, whatever he's doing, praise the Lord. And, Amen. Uh, and Amen. I hope all the church are experiencing that. I really do. Is there anything else we needed to talk about? V- VBS? VBS June 7th through the 10th. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Miss Beth needs some line leaders. She told us this morning. So if you know of anyone or uh, are interested in in uh, corralling children from one section of the church to the, to another, we would love Miss Beth would love to talk to you about that and and get some help there. And yep, sounds good. We, we're not, by the way. I wanted to clarify one thing. Uh, we are not doing Isaiah first. We're going to do our Sunday school class is going to start in Acts. Okay. The decision and we're going to go made. through. Yeah. Well, they, they decided on Sunday. Uh, we're going to do Acts first, then we're going to go back to, to Isaiah. Yeah. Which I thought was pretty good. We had an interesting trans. Somebody said, I think it was, we were talking about it, and they said, we don't really have a name for our Sunday school class, but if we did name it, it would be an odd walk through the Bible. Amen. We'll the way it. we're going, but yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty I'd good. walk. Pray for our friend Chrissa. She's yes. uh, trying to hit some cancer treatments in, and, and Brother Jim scanned this this morning. Or yes, sir. is that this morning? It's the mo- this morning. Yes. Okay. So we're asking the Lord for some good results for him. And I have to remember when this airs, as opposed to what time we video it. Yes. So I always have to. Yes. 
Pray for us, brother. I will do it. Lord, we just thank you so much for this time, Lord. We thank you for this this. I mean, this instruction book that we have, though, that we can look at, at, at specific instances that, that apply to what we're trying to do in this church and go, here's how we do it, and, and, and just to be bold in everything that we do and, and, and what you're sending us out to do. But we thank you that, that um, the mission of our church is attracting other, other people. We thank you so much for that, and we thank you for just continually adding people. Uh, to our church and, and help us to equip them the way that we're supposed to and help us as leaders to, to, you know, not just hold them accountable, but give them the tools that they need and the confidence that they need. And Lord, we just, uh, we just want to thank you so much for Jesus and what he does for us. And, and, and Lord, the, just the opportunity to get to tell somebody else about it and hopefully watch their, watch their lives change uh, just so much for the better. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. I think it is hot. I think something got turned on. Because we were talking about louder.